One month into Israel's attack on Gaza, the death toll is nearing 10,000, with the overwhelming majority of those killed being civilians. UN schools, hospitals and refugee camps in Gaza have been targeted, resulting in hundreds of deaths and injuries. As aid slowly trickles in, foreign nationals and severely injured Palestinians have been trying to get out, but the Rafah border crossing has opened and then closed without notice. To get a better understanding of what the humanitarian situation is like in Gaza, joining me from Tunis is Francesca Albanese. She is the United Nations Special Rapporteur on the Occupied Palestinian Territories. Francesca, hello and welcome to Straight Talk. It's good to have you on the program. So we said it's been over a month since Israel started its bombardment of Gaza. Uh, what is the latest situation there and how dire is the humanitarian catastrophe? Uh, thank you, Arsha. The situation is uh, incredibly dire. Um, the, the bombing, the carpet bombing that uh, Israel uh, has unleashed against the Gaza Strip for almost four weeks now has uh, put uh, the population of Gaza on its knees. Again, the, the figures that uh, you have given are horrific. 10,000 people killed, 4,000 of them are children, there are other 2,000 people missed, probably under the rubble, probably dead. And uh, the, 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 the health situation, the, the health facilities have are collapsing for those which are still functioning. Many hospitals in northern Gaza have stopped, uh, stopped functioning. Uh, there is no possibility to rescue this population under such a severe bombing. And at the time, the siege, the 16-year-old siege has been tightened. Yes. There is no food, water, electricity, fuel, medicine, other than a few hundred trucks that have entered in three weeks. Nothing has reached Gaza. And we are talking of a situation which was already a humanitarian uh, crisis before the 7th of October and still had 500 trucks entering every day. Yes. So the situation is really, really catastrophic. And I, I struggle to see why the international community is not pushing for an immediate ceasefire. Yes. So you, you as the uh, UN's Special Rapporteur on Human Rights in the Palestinian Territories, are entrusted uh, with the task of receiving communication to hear witnesses uh, and to use of such modalities, procedures. So with communication lines and internet uh, regularly uh, being cut off, how difficult is your mission has become? It has, it, it's very difficult. It's very difficult because I've lost contact with the human rights organizations I've worked with for four years. Um, and uh, it was shocking a couple of weeks ago to know that uh, Raji Surani, one of the most renowned human rights advocate and icon for human rights and justice in Palestine, he was taken out of the rubble. I mean, he, thankfully still alive. But, you know, I've also had contacts with children in children's councils across Gaza because I wrote my last report on children and I've worked with them so closely during this summer. Uh, it's it's really heartbreaking to, to report on their life while the narrative in the dominant media is completely demoted from their reality, which is made of unspeakable pain and, and suffering. Nonetheless, I rely on uh, uh, the information that is uh, provided by the United Nations. I'm in uh, daily contact with uh, with former UN colleagues uh, and um, and other humanitarian operators yes. who still have contacts in in Gaza. So the information I I refer I relate to as is, uh, is that that is verified by the United Nations. So uh, Francesca, uh, U.S. Uh, President Joe Biden has called for a humanitarian pause, how would that or this move help alleviate the uh, sufferings of the Gazans? I think it's the, the cynicism of this expression is deserves attention because what is he asking for is a pause in the bombing, in the bombing that has already killed the thousands of civilians and who's military gains are still unclear and opaque because, I mean, after one month, Israel should be asked what, what has it reached 
through this fierce military response. A humanitarian pause is, seems to be an alternative to what is needed, a ceasefire. Are, are they going to say that the bombing will need to stop just to give enough respite to people before Israel starts bombing again? I think it's cruel. So um, could other humanitarian corridors be open to injured Gazans or uh, foreigners who want to get out? They must. They must be open. I've asked for the, together with other rapporteurs, for the opening of humanitarian ceasefires, uh, sorry, humanitarian corridors since the very beginning of the operations. But the humanitarian corridor shall not uh, translate into an avenue for forced displacement because Israel is planning to yes. evacuate as many people as possible from the Gaza Strip. And this would be forcible transfer because the protected population of Gaza should not be taken out of the occupied territory. So corridors could be open to the occupied territory itself, to the West Bank, to East Jerusalem, or if this is not practical for any reason to Israel. I do not see why Egypt should be the only option. But also tensions are running high in the uh, occupied West Bank. I mean, how will the expulsion of Palestinian workers from the occupied territories to Gaza play out? I mean, can we talk about, as you have mentioned, an all-out forced deportation of Palestinians from their own lands? And what does that uh, tantamount to? Absolutely. No, there has been a, 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 a severe, mis severe mistreatment and abuse for weeks of the Gaza workers who are in Israel. And, um, and this is a, a, a huge problem that I couldn't investigate because my mandate doesn't cover Israel. But of course, it's, it's critical that this is spoken about. But what I, can, what I can certainly report on is that over three weeks, the violence by Israeli soldiers and armed settlers against the defenseless Palestinian people and villages has intensified to the point that thousands have been arrested. 137 Palestinians have been killed, 27 of them by armed settlers, and 43 of them are children. And the violence is unspeakable. I mean, I've received information confirmed, verified by soldiers, I mean, former soldiers, those of breaking the silence, um, of violence and abuses committed against Palestinians in the um, in the in the West Bank. Yeah, I think this is the case of the workers you were referring to, who were like groups of dozens of men rounded up, stripped naked, taped, urinated upon. I mean, this is so violent, and it has reminded me of the scenes yes. of Abu Ghraib that no one wants to well, no one wants to see happening again. So many UN staff and other NGOs and journalists have been killed uh, in Israeli strikes, uh, strikes. How worrying is that like many non-combatants are being needlessly killed in this conflict? And what can be done to better prote protect those people? Uh Asha, I think that to better protect the people, what is needed is a ceasefire. And the military strategy that allows for the achievement of a military goal, but the military goal is unclear because what is emerging louder and louder in Israel is a is a genocidal call. I'm sorry, I cannot call it otherwise because these are the words. The Palestinians are being critically dehumanized and have been critically dehumanized. There is a, a, a louder call for the erasure of Gaza that doesn't only come from military and political leaders in Israel. There are also portions of the society who are joining that call, isolating more and more those Israelis who have for decades advocated for, advocated for the end of the occupation and the apartheid. So this is the reality on the ground. Yes. So and what is needed is a serious mobilization of the international community, which has completely obliterated international law. But have you lately been sensing a um, change in the tide in the world, especially Israel's uh, allies, uh, that the attack on Gaza has gone too far? And on the other hand, we know that uh, Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu says there will be no ceasefire until Hamas is completely dislodged from Gaza. How do you see it unfolding? 
I think that there is a huge responsibility of the international community because this operation has gone wrong in the wrong direction since the very first day. Because after the atrocious, horrendous attack that Israel has, suff has had suffered on the 7th of October, the, the response should have been according to international law, reestablishment, maintenance of all law and order. Instead, the international community has supported the claim the, of Israel to self-defense under the UN Charter, which doesn't mean the right to protect itself. It means the right to wage a war against an occupied population. Why the international community has not stepped in to help the militarize Hamas if this was a goal? Mm -hmm. Well, no, this is being used, in my view, as the pretext to further, further plunder the Palestinian population and force them to leave the Gaza Strip. This is the context that we need to keep in mind because this is what's happening. All right, Francesca, unfortunately, we'll have to leave it here. Thank you very much for joining me on Straight Talk.